say for you what that will be. The Queen's Gambit is a new limited series on Netflix that was created by Scott Frank and a bunch of people are talking about right now. I think it's the number one show on Netflix right now. In The Queen's Gambit, it's about Beth Harmon. She's an orphan child turned into a chess prodigy. And as she becomes better at chess and becomes an icon, she realizes that comes at a personal price. I'm sorry I'm getting this review a little bit late, I don't think it's too late because this came out like two or three weeks ago, but it seems like everyone's been talking about the show and I'm just reviewing it now. But I want to say I'm really glad I watched the show because I really, really enjoyed this miniseries. I think it's extremely well made and it's extremely smart, so let's talk about it. Full disclosure, I suck at chess. I always get outsmarted by my opponent. I know there's a lot of strategy and shit like that, and I never really understood it. I just go for blood. I try and take out every single piece, and after watching the show, I am pretty sure that is not how you're supposed to play chess. I'm actually positive now. I knew there was some strategy in the chess, but after watching the show, it blew my mind how much strategy goes into a chess game, how many different ways you can win chess, and how much math and statistics and strategy goes into chess. It blew my mind. The chess matches are a lot of fun, even though sometimes I get kind of lost. I think it's probably because I suck at chess, and I just sort of roll with what the show is showing me. But overall, I think the chess matches were really riveting and they're really interesting. But my favorite part about this show isn't even the chess. And I'm really glad this show's main focus isn't the chess. Yes, the chess matches are a huge part of the show. It's Beth Harmon's passion. Without chess, there really wouldn't be a plot to the show. But the main focus of the show is Beth Harmon. A fascinating character played by Anya Taylor-Joy who deserves a Golden Globe or an Emmy. This performance is masterful. I've only seen her in Split, Glass, and in Season 5 of Peaky Blinders, but her performance here is spectacular. She's a completely different person from the start of the show to the finale. That has to do with the writing, but that also has to do with the performance. It's a great character development. This show is written extremely well specifically with its characters and Beth Harmon, like I said. Beth Harmon is such an interesting character. And Beth Harmon is a fucking badass. She can go into any room knowing she's the smartest person in that room and she's gonna beat you mentally. But that's not even the best part about Beth Harmon. The best part about her is she has lots of flaws. She is dealing with a lot of personal issues. There's a lot of sexism in the chess world in the 1960s and she has to deal with that. But on top of that, she has a very dark past and she deals with a lot of substance abuse, depression, grief. And I think the show explores those ideas so, so brilliantly. For me, that was the most interesting part about the show, and the chess parts were a nice cherry on top. I really love the direction and the production of the show as well. It really feels like we're in a time machine, we're back in the 1960s. And you can tell Scott Frank really loved this time period because there's a lot of times where the shots linger on 1960s shit. And I really appreciated that. It looked really good. And like I said before, the show is written extremely well. It was written so well, it seems like the story actually happened. Yes, look it up. This is a fictional story. It's based off a novel that was actually written by an OU professor. Believe it or not. Fun fact right there. I'm not gonna lie, while I was watching the first two episodes, I thought this was a true story. That doesn't mean this show's worse because it's not. It's just written so well that it seemed very believable. The script is very smart. It's very tight. All the chess sequences, all the shit about chess seems very intelligent. It seems like Scott Frank knows what he's talking about. It seems like he really enjoys chess. But then also with his characters and its drama and its plot, it's very interesting. It's very well done. I also really enjoy the finale. No spoilers, of course, but it seemed like a lot of things built up to those moments and there was great payoff there. I really don't have any issues with this series. It does drag a little bit in the middle, but it doesn't really ruin anything. And I do think there was a character return that happens in the finale, like halfway through the finale, that seemed a little unbelievable. Just because this whole series seems so real and so believable, and then this character returning didn't seem realistic, and I don't know if I bought this character's return. Now, I just finished the series, maybe two days from now, I'll be like, oh, that makes a little bit more sense. But as I was watching, I was like, eh. I don't know. In the end though, The Queen's Gambit is a great limited series. I think it's really well written. The production, the direction is great. But the best part about this show isn't even the chess, which is also really great. But the best part about this show is Beth Harmon played flawlessly by Anya Taylor-Joy. She's an extremely interesting character with flaws, but those are the best types of protagonists. And I have a pretty good feeling this show's gonna win a shit ton of awards. I'm gonna give The Queen's Gambit nine Davy Daves. It's only seven episodes long, and each episode's around an hour, some are shorter than an hour, so you can finish this pretty quickly. It's really not a hard watch, 
but I really do recommend this show. So The Queen's Gambit. Let me know what you guys thought of it if you've seen it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Click here to see more Dave Dave's takes.